Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about how we can test whether or not a population mean differs from some standard or hypothesized value using a technique called the one sample t test. Now, if you recall from our discussion of the normal distribution, the normal distribution is defined by both its mean and its standard deviation. And while we can hypothesize about what the mean value might be, the standard deviation is often unknown. So if we were to use a Z test to determine whether or not our sample mean deviated significantly from a hypothesized value, we'd need to know what the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is, this sigma sub y bar in the denominator. And this is unfortunately almost never known. So one way around this is that we can use the standard error from the sample as an estimate of our standard deviation of this sampling distribution, just like we've talked about in the past. And we can calculate this standard error of the sample mean as the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. But when we do this, we change the underlying distribution a little bit. Instead of now dealing with a Z distribution, we need to make an adjustment and instead talk about what's called the T distribution. Our T distribution is very similar to our normal distribution. It compares the mean of a random sample from a normal population with a population mean specified in the null hypothesis. So we can determine then whether our population deviates from this hypothesized mean. And it allows us to test this hypothesis using only information contained within the sample. And we do this by calculating a t-test statistic, which is equal to the sample mean minus the hypothesized mean that we specify in our null hypothesis, divided by the standard error of the mean calculated from our sample alone. And if you recall from the previous slide, then this standard error is calculated as the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So you can see then that our t distribution is really similar to our z distribution. They're shaped in a very similar way. So here I've depicted the Z distribution shown in red and a really similar T distribution for four degrees of freedom that's shown in blue. They're both centered around zero, they're both symmetrical, and they both have this characteristic bell-like shape, but the shape is slightly different. You can see that as we get out towards the tail of the distribution, the T distribution has a little bit fatter tails than the Z distribution. So although they're really similar, they're not exactly the same. And this is why we need to use this T distribution instead of our Z distribution when the standard deviation in the population is unknown. So you'll notice in the previous slide that we needed to specify our degrees of freedom for a t-distribution. And a t-distribution is like some of the other distributions that we've talked about in the past that is specified by its degrees of freedom. We didn't specify a mean or a standard deviation or anything like that. The only variable that we specify in describing the t-distribution is its degrees of freedom. Now, when we calculate t, if you recall, we needed to estimate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution using the standard error from our sample. And so as a result, we've used one piece of information from our sample, and so we only have n minus one pieces of information left. So the way we calculate the degrees of freedom then for a one sample t-test is to take our sample size and subtract one from it. So let's work through an example then to see exactly how we might use this one sample t-test to determine whether a population 
deviates from a hypothesized value. And the example that we're going to work through is an example of human body temperature. Now, most people think of the average human body temperature of a healthy human as being 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But is it really? We could collect some data and test this hypothesis using our one sample t-test. In this case, our null hypothesis is that the mean healthy human body temperature is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And our alternate hypothesis is that the mean healthy human body temperature is not equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So suppose we randomly selected 25 healthy humans and measured their body temperature to come up with a sample of 25 observations of human body temperature that might look something like this. Now from this sample, we could calculate the mean body temperature of these 25 humans. And we calculate that this value is 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And is this really all that unusual? Is this a really unusual finding compared to what we would expect if our null hypothesis were true and the true population mean were 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? So to do this, we can perform what's called a one sample t-test, where the first thing we do is to calculate our test statistic, here referred to as the t-test statistic, as the difference between our sample mean and the hypothesized standard that we want to compare against, which in this case is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to divide that difference by the standard error of our sample. Now here we've got the first example then of a test statistic that is made up of two components. You can think of the numerator in this test statistic as being the strength of the signal. How far away is our sample mean from the hypothesized mean? And in the denominator, we have some measure of the uncertainty around our estimate of the sample mean. So this is what you can think of as the noise or the uncertainty. And so we, here we have a test statistic, which is really a, a ratio of the magnitude of the difference divided by our uncertainty about what that population mean actually is. And so we have something akin to a signal to noise ratio. How strong is the signal compared to our uncertainty? Once we calculate this t-test statistic then, we can compare our observed t to the distribution of t's that we would expect to get if the null hypothesis were true. So we already calculated our sample mean as 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Our sample size was 25. And the standard deviation from our sample was 0.678. So we can then use this information on the sample size and the standard deviation from our sample to calculate our standard error of the mean, which is equal to 0 0.136. Remember, this is a measure of the precision with which we're estimating our mean. We can then use this standard error of the mean and our other calculated values to calculate our t-test statistic which is just the difference between our sample mean and the hypothesized mean value from our null hypothesis, divided by this measure of our precision in our estimate of the sample mean. So here we calculated our sample mean as 98.524, and we subtract from that our hypothesized standard of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and divide that difference by our standard error of the mean. And when we do that, we can calculate our t-test statistic 
as negative 0 0.56, okay? So in this case then, our observed sample mean differs from the hypothesized standard by negative 0 0.56 standard error units. So is this unusual? Is this a large value? Well, we can compare this value, this observed T value, to the distribution of Ts that we would expect to get when the null hypothesis is true and we have 24 degrees of freedom corresponding to our sample size of 25. So when the null hypothesis is true and the population mean is equal to 98.6, most of the time we're going to calculate a t-test statistic in and around zero, and only very rarely is our sample mean going to deviate so much from the hypothesized value that we get a very large or a very small t-test statistic. So this blue line then represents the distribution of t values that we would expect to get when the null hypothesis is true. So we know that our observed value was negative 0 0.56. So what is the probability then of getting a value as extreme or more extreme in either direction, both in the negative direction or in the positive direction, if the null hypothesis were true? So we can calculate this probability then using some code in R where we can get the area under this curve from this PT command, which tells us what the probability is of getting a value equal to or less than negative 0.56 from a T distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. So that is the area to the left of our observed value. If you remember, these PT or P norm or P chi squared commands in R by default give us the area to the left of our specified value. And so this PT command over here gives us the area to the left of our observed test statistic. And because the T distribution is symmetrical, we can simply multiply this probability by two to get our overall p-value because the area to the left of negative 0.56 is equal to the area to the right of 0.56. So we can see then that we get a probability of 0.58 of getting a t value as extreme or more extreme than what we calculated when the null hypothesis is true. And this is actually quite a large value. So in this case, we would conclude that the mean body temperature of healthy humans does not differ from 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And we could support this biological conclusion then with the results of our statistical test. And we represent these in parentheses at the end of our statement. So here we report our t-test statistic as being equal to negative 0.56. This is what we calculated from our sample. This test had 24 degrees of freedom, and we need to be sure to specify the degrees of freedom because the t-distribution depends on the degrees of freedom and the p-value is equal to 0.58. And so because this p-value was greater than our alpha of 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean body temperature of healthy humans does not differ from 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to always consider the assumptions of our statistical test and in this case, the assumptions of a one-sample t-test are really quite similar to the assumptions that we've already dealt with. First, this test assumes that observations in our sample are independent of one another. 
and that they are randomly collected. That means they are a random subset of the possible observations that we could have sampled from our population. And the second assumption is that the variable that we measured, in this case body temperature, is normally distributed. And if this variable is normally distributed, then our sampling means will be normally distributed, and we can use a t-test statistic to test our null hypothesis. So when we want to determine whether a population mean deviates or differs from a hypothesized value or standard, and the standard deviation in the population is unknown, then we use a one-sample t-test.